Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Java 101 series. In this episode, I'm going to teach you guys about enumerators. Now, I believe I might have briefly mentioned this in another video, but I've never really taken a good amount of time to explain exactly what an enumerator is. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Uh, an enumerator uh, is another type of class, like this is a regular class, there are also interfaces. I haven't gone too much into that, uh, but you know, an interface is another type of class that has all abstract methods in it. Uh, then there's also the enumerator, which defines a bunch of constants, and they can have um, properties associated with them. It'll make a little bit more sense once we actually make one. So today we're going to make an enumerator that contains the days of the week. Let's go ahead and um, on our project we're going to create a new um, enumerator, and we're going to call this day. Now you'll notice that this looks very similar to the main uh, class, except that instead of saying public class day, it's public enum day. We're telling Java that this is going to be an enumerator, so it works a little bit differently. Um, the first thing that you want to do in an enumerator is define all of the constants. So let's go ahead and define the days of the week. We'll start with Monday. Now when you use an enumerator, you usually write in all caps. That's just how they work. Some people don't, uh, but that's generally what you would do, and the enumerators that are in Java itself um, do use capital letters. So we'll go ahead and type these out. Monday, these are separated in a comma, with commas. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I've just defined seven different constants. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, with the enumerator, a semicolon is optional. You can either have one or not. But what I've just done is created an enumerator called day that contains the days of the week. So in our main method, if I go ahead and type in day dot, you'll notice that all of these constants come up, all the days of the week come up, and then so do a bunch of static methods. And then there are also some non-static methods. So let's first go through some of the methods that are already included. Then I'll show you one other thing that you can do with enumerators that's um, you know, going to be very important that you would definitely want to know. Um, so first of all, uh, some important methods include value of. So if you want to, let's say that I have um, the word Friday um, enclosed in a string. Uh, and I want to get the version of it in day. So like if I want to take Friday um, and get it as a constant in the day enumerator, you would use the value of method and then give it um, Friday. And then what it would do is it would figure out, okay, here's a Friday constant inside of day, and then it would return that constant. So it will return a day constant. So I could, excuse me, go ahead and say day day is equal to day dot value of Friday. Um, and then if I go ahead and print out the day, it would print out Friday. Now one important thing to note is that um, if I type in Friday not in all caps, or if I type in something that doesn't exist, you're going to get an illegal argument exception, and it's going to say that there's no constant that exists. Um, so like for Friday, or if I type in something day, anything that doesn't exist in there, you'll get an illegal argument exception that says that it does not exist. So commonly with this, you'd probably want to get a user's input and then check to see if the input is valid. And in this case, you would probably do it with a try and catch. So you would do something like day day. Try day is equal to day dot value of Friday, for example. But you would catch an exception or an illegal argument exception and then um, you could print out invalid constant or probably a better message than that uh, but then if we go ahead and do that if we run it now it will obviously print out Friday uh, but if I try to do Friday in lowercase it would print out um, invalid constant and then it would print out null because the day is null um, 
So that's how you would use the value of method. The next, and I guess the only other method that's really important, is the values method. That returns an array that contains all of the values. So for example, for day, day, in, day dot values. This is an enhanced for loop. Then we can go ahead and print out day. So let's run this, and you'll see that it prints out all of the days Monday through Sunday. So that's an easy way to just get an array of all of the values inside of the day enumerator or any enumerator. So those methods are automatically included, and all you have to do is tell Java that this is an enumerator. Now let's take a look at some of the methods that are included once you actually have a day. So let's say that you pick out a day by, you know, using its constant, or you use the value of method, or you obtain it in some other way. So let's say that we're going to use Monday. You'll notice that a bunch of other methods show up. There's, first of all, all the methods that Java already includes, um, but there are also some other important methods that you would want to use. Uh, for example, name will return the exact name uh, of how this, of this. So in this case, it would, Monday would return Monday in all caps. Tuesday would return Tuesday in all caps. If you want to get the exact name, you could use name, which would obviously return a string with the exact name. Um, otherwise, you probably want to use toString, um, which by default will also return the name, uh, but you would override you can override the toString method, whereas you can't override the name method. So if you want to have a custom output for your day, then you would have to override the toString, and then that's what you should use. Um, some other important ones, I guess the only other one that's really important is ordinal, and this returns the um, number, the position of the um, element. So for example, if I go ahead and print out um, Monday's ordinal, it will print out zero, because in this declaration, um, Monday is the zeroth term. But if I go ahead and print out Sunday, if I could spell it right, Sunday, which is um, the last one, it would print out six, because it's the starting at zero, the sixth, or really the seventh um, item. So you can use ordinal to figure out the order of something, and then you could also use it to figure out relative to other um, you know, days, whether it's earlier by checking if it would be, if one would be less than the other. So, uh, ordinal just returns the um, number based on how it's declared. Uh, so that's the important basics of enumerators, uh, but one really important thing is that enumerators can actually have uh, a constructor, and they can have um, instance fields, and they can have methods. So I'll go ahead and show that to you now. If you're going to do anything other than declare constants, you do need to put a semicolon after all of the um, constants that you declared because now we're going to start actually adding some other things. And today we're just going to add one um, instance field, instance variable, which we'll call um, private string um, abbreviation. I don't know if I spelled that right. I might have. And then we'll go ahead and do a constructor. You can't have a public constructor uh, because all of the enumerators are defined at uh, compile time. So before the program is run, everything is already pre-decided. So you can't instantiate another day. You can't just say like day uh, something day is equal to new day. You can't do that. You have to uh, define all of them at run at compile time. So then we can go ahead and say this dot abbreviation is equal to abbreviation, and then we can have a getter. Get, ugh, get abbreviation, return abbreviation. And if I spelled that wrong, which I might have, then I'll fix it. Now, uh, you'll notice that we're getting an error message because um, now that we've defined the constructor, we uh, need to use it in all of these constants. You can have as many constructors as you want and then choose which one you want to use, uh, but to use a constructor right next to the constant, you want to put um, your parentheses, and then inside of that, you put any of the arguments that you want. So in this case, the abbreviation will be uh, mon for Monday, twos for Tuesday, wed for Wednesday, um, thur for Thursday, fry for Friday, sat for Saturday, and sun for Sunday. And this is easy just to do because uh, Tuesday and Thursday will commonly have um, 
three letters or four letters instead of three. So instead of just hard coding that it takes the first three letters. Uh, and this is just an example. Um, I don't know how useful a day of the week enumerator would be unless you're making a calendar program. Uh, but this is just an example to show exactly how it would work. Um, so now let's go ahead and override the toString method that will actually return. We're going to say return name. So we're first going to get the name. So actually it'll say Monday. And then in parentheses, we're going to go ahead and write get abbreviation. Just like that. So now let's go ahead and see if you can remember what method you use to get all of the values in the day enumerator. It would be the um, values method, which will return uh, an array of all of the values. So we can just go ahead and print out day. And if I do it run, if I run it, it will print out the actual name. By calling this name method, it prints out the actual name as it's declared right there. Then I'm also printing out the abbreviation in parentheses. So um, we have, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they all have their correct abbreviations next to, next to them. And then obviously if I wanted to, um, I could print out like day.monday.get abbreviation, and then that would just print out mon by itself. Uh, because the getter is, of course, public. You could, um, you know, once you declare all of your constants, an enumerator basically works the same as a class, except that you instantiate it in the class itself, and you can't instantiate it after that. So you can only instantiate this enumerator inside of the class, and then you have to give it the arguments there, or the parameters for the constructor, and then you can't add, remove, or, um, you know, make separate more of these more constants in the enumerator. They're done once they start. Um, so that's all for this video. I just wanted to show you guys how to use enumerators because they can be um, really, really helpful with like the methods that they come built in um, and then just you know using the enumerators themselves. It can be very helpful if you're working on a bigger project that requires a lot of classes. Chances are you might have an enumerator to represent some certain piece of data uh, where there's only a couple of specific answers, um, then you would just want to use an enumerator. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more uh, Java videos. Bye, guys.